morning everybody Todd Metalhead Weatherman here as promised from last night's stream we're doing a tropical update and boy oh boy you're gonna flip and you see this this doesn't look like June at all so this is actually kind of looking a little bit more like mid to late July and almost August in a sense you don't see this in late June we have three count them three areas of interest now including this area here towards the main development region normally this doesn't pop up until a little bit later into the season for a couple of different reasons which we'll get into in a moment here but this system is starting to organize itself there's still a slim chance that it could develop into our next name storm but pay extra close attention especially if you're planning to make a trip to the caribbean on this system here invest 95 l has an 80% chance of developing within the next couple of days. In fact, it wouldn't surprise me if we would end up seeing this become barrel by later today. The storm is looking very organized, and I'll show you what this looks like on satellite as well. But in either case, I do think that this is gonna become barrel, and then we might end up seeing this become a name storm as well. And then there's another one right behind it that's just come off of the West African coast here. We'll have to see how this pans out here, but honestly, I was not expecting it to get busy this quickly. Three tropical waves in June, you don't see that often. I mean, I know I keep kind of reiterating it a little bit, but I'm, I'm honestly a little bit stunned myself. Just honestly, I knew we were expecting an active season, but that that's crazy. So we actually go into a different source here, so we, that way we can get a look at some of the spaghetti models. What I've noticed is, of course, with these two storms here, we have more information available on these than we do this. This is brand new. But these two storms, of course, most likely to head into land. This first Invest 94L is likely to, of course, go into the Bay of Campeche, most likely going to see impacts towards Mexico. And then this system, this one, I have a lot of questions about. We're going to kind of get into that just a little bit here we're going to kind of keep this one brief because of course we're looking pretty far into the long range here and we don't want to make speculations as to where this may go but you do want to pay attention if you're in if you're in uh, puerto rico or anywhere really within the hispaniola region cuba as well so eyes front on this storm here and then like i said this one's pretty new and still a mystery but i do think it probably will ride on the coattails of this storm Will it have the same kind of success? That is still to be determined, but it just based on satellite here, everything looks like it's starting to ramp up pretty notably here across the board. So this is Invest 95L here. This is our big storm, our code red, so to speak. It's weather slang amongst hurricane community here. But you can see that we have pretty good counterclockwise spin at this point. And you can see increasing thunderstorm convection around a organized center now to to go along with it here's our other tropical wave going behind it as well and you even see more energy coming off of the uh, african coast here so big reason as to there's two big reasons as to why we often don't look towards this region early in the season and one of those reasons and i'm going to shift it over to water vapor energy to show you here you see this uh, yellowish brown color here? That is what you call Saharan dust. And Saharan dust usually is dry air. You don't want dry air with a tropical system, of course, because tropical, you usually would think of moisture. So whenever you get that Saharan dust getting into these storms or coming around them, it usually ends up choking them out. And what I've found interesting is a little wrap of moisture that's kind of come around 95L here. And what's ended up happening in return is it's kept it protected from the Saharan dust, which, which has allowed it to prosper. And that's going to continue to be the case as it continues to go east here. My big concern, of course, is this line right here, 60 degree west. The 60 degree west line, once you get past that point, we're only looking at land at that point. At some point, the system will impact the land in some way shape or form hopefully it's something weak but as you can see here if you compare these two together we clearly see this cross in that 60 degree plane here so we need to be extra watchful again if you are in the caribbean right now and then 
Gulf Coast. I'm not saying that you should be concerned just yet, but you need to be paying attention for sure. So Florida all the way to Texas, definitely need to be watching. And then, of course, we still have 94 to watch here, too. Although, of course, like I said before, this one's a little bit unorganized, but it still has a fighting chance here. 20 to 30 percent isn't zero. Then, of course, we have this one that we'll be watching over the coming days. We'll talk about that more as the days go by. That being said, let's go ahead and actually take a look at some of the moisture here since we're in that time of year still. And like I said, this is a big reason as to why I normally don't look towards this region during this time of year. Low pressure has really organized itself quite nicely, I'll say that as well as we continue to go forward here. And this strengthens more because you can actually see the uh, ISO bars here actually start to tighten up around this. So it's going to continue to strengthen. And the green area and the moisture here and the humidities at the mid levels are definitely showing that. So we get a nice little cocoon of moisture to keep it safe from that Saharan dust here. And we'll continue to see that even with the next system, it looks like too, or at least that's what the forecast trend is showing. So there's a chance we could see some rapid strengthening here between both of these systems. The track as to where they go from that point is still questionable. The thing is, though, one thing I'm making note of is the fact that on GFS, that this storm strengthens and looks like it's maybe our first hurricane of the year. So we might get a hurricane barrel from the system. I'm almost certain that this is you know, going to be named barrel, but the intensity is still a question to me. Of course, this is only one model that we're looking at right now. Then this storm behind it organizes itself pretty nicely. The question is, what kind of environment will it face as it goes into this region here? I do think that some dry air is going to get to the backside of that other system. And then the question becomes for the other, for the uh, system that's likely to become barrel, how much land interaction does it have? And what happens when it goes over the Gulf? We're looking at over 200 hours out before that system would even make it towards the Gulf if it were to. So over 10 days, so that's a big gray area in regards to how things pan out with that. But in any case, though, we do need to be paying attention as we continue to go forward here. We already know that um, we already know that 94 is 94 L, I should say. Isn't going to be incredibly powerful because it hasn't really gotten itself organized, doesn't really have a lot of time to organize and it's going to interact with land soon. So right around the end of the month, I would say towards the end of this weekend, even we'll see this probably head into land. Maybe it'll become a name storm. I'm kind of leaning against it. And of course, like I said before, we have to watch this storm here. And depending on how the storm strengthens also could determine its track too. this uh, area of high pressure here. If this uh, storm gets strong enough, this high pressure will catch it and take it out to sea. Like I said, once we get past the six degree line, there's only land for it to interact with. So, like I said, really thinking the Caribbean is going to be at the most risk with this storm. But just what happens beyond that point, especially with this storm behind it, still a gray area again. So, looking at our wind shear here, and this is where we bring the euro into the, into the equation here in the top right. It's the European ensemble, I should say. The thing to make note of here is there's still some wind shear involved with this system. Although it's not going to be wind shear that's going to do a whole lot to slow it down. It, you have a nice little cocoon here that pops up right in between the gap. And that's where I think we'll end up having an environment that's favorable for it to continue to grow. So we'll have to see how things pan out from that point. My concern is if this does make it into the Gulf with a lighter wind shear, this could be a huge problem. That could be a big time system that ends up popping up. Should that be the case? Then the other system behind it, that's where I'm also concerned because We've been talking about this for a while. We're expecting the wind shear over this region to decrease. And that's been a common trend amongst any ensemble that I've seen. The two that I like to use the most, GFS and the Euro ensembles, have been hot on this for a long time. And it looks like that's going to continue to be the case, unfortunately. So with these systems here, my concern definitely is increasing a bit here. Obviously, no one should panic because we still don't know what these systems will do exactly, but this is a warning. So this is your wake-up call towards the Gulf Coast, towards the Caribbean. Hurricane season's here. You need to prepare.
because this looks like it could get busy and it could get busy fast. With that being said, another thing we're wanting to look at here, and this is another reason why there's so much concern around the season. Look at these sea surface temperatures. Yes, they're in Celsius, but I'll put it to you like this about 20 to 25 degrees Celsius, about 80 degree temperatures in the water. Look at how many areas were well above 25, getting into almost 30. So we're getting close to 90 degrees, especially in the Gulf. So a lot of concern to be had towards these regions, especially with the wind shear starting to lighten up here. So these storms will have ample fuel to strengthen and strengthen quick, quickly, especially once they get past the 60 degree west line. So again, Best thing you can do for yourself and for, and for the people around you is to make sure that you are on top of your game here. So the last thing we'll go ahead and do is take a look at what this vorticity, what the uh, vorticity map looks like here. So it'll give us a good idea of systems after this one to keep an eye out for. So this is of course 95L, 94L here. Then we watch another system come in right behind it. That's probably, that is going to be 96L. And then also keep your eye on this region over here towards West Africa. Any energy that comes off of that that starts out spinning will have a good chance of development. But as we mentioned before though, Saharan dust does come back into play and I'll try to keep this area pretty limited here. This little area of high pressure here is gonna help also keep some of this activity a little bit further towards the center at bay right now. So seeing something like this, I'm not too concerned with. It's probably gonna get torn apart pretty quick. Of course, we'll have to see trends change or not, but in either case, whether you're looking at the GFS ensemble here, or we'll just sneak over and look at the Euro, pretty much a similar deal. There's 95, there's 94, 96 right there, does eventually try to strengthen here. And then after that point, Sahara and Dust does come back into play. So in either sense here, Things are already picking up much faster than expected, and we need to make sure that we are doing what we're supposed to do to keep ourselves safe in the event that a big storm does end up making its way towards our areas. That being said, though, I hope you guys have a good rest of your day. I will probably take the rest of today to rest here because it looks like we're going to have some pretty busy times ahead for hurricane season. Severe weather is also going to be a big thing. So... Like I said, stay weather aware and I will see you next time.